finding life a bit complex? Confusing? Aware that your old strategies aren't working? Why not ask Pam and Marilyn? This is The Irreverent Therapists. And we're here to add some clarity, humor, and a bit of what might be considered blasphemy to your day. Welcome, everyone, to The Irreverent Therapist Show. I'm Marilyn Bradford, and I have my co-host and also devious – I didn't want to say deviant therapist. That didn't sound too good. <laughs> <laughs> I like irreverent. Better. All right. We'll go devious. with irreverent. My, we are devious. <laughs> <laughs> my uh, uh, irreverent therapist partner, Pam Hodling. Hi, Pam. Hello. Hi, everybody. And today we're going to be talking about, can I have the money now, please? Are you comfortable asking for and receiving money for your products or services or even out of the for nothing? Are your prices way too low, but you never get around to changing them? Is money one of those things that you don't think you understand, don't quite know what to do with, think you want, but shy away from money, 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 money. What is it anyway? And what part does it should it play in our lives? And that's what we're talking about today. Just a very simple, easy, non-complicated topic. Money! <laughs> and, a, and a topic that no one has any, you know, like, buttons that get pushed mm. or any strong points of view points about. Points of view. You know, when I was thinking about the show, one of the things that I was thinking about is I really had to clear, well, first get clear on, and then clear all of the points of view that I had about money that I got from my family. Because basically, I grew up in an academic family, and my dad even had turned down a uh, vice presidency of an oil company to become a professor. I'm like, really, Dad? Really? I didn't find this out till later. <laughs> but, but basically, their attitude towards money was that it was rather low class, and that if you were truly – going to be contributing to the world. You needed to do it through science or academic research or something like that. And people who had businesses, well, it just wasn't quite the same. So, and it was very odd because in a way they disdained money. So of course they never had any or didn't have any until later. Um, and they both grew up in the depression. So that was another thing that you had, that money was scarce. You had to work hard for it. So there were all of these kinds of things mm -hmm. that were – that formulated my early ideas about money and business and having money and how easy was it to get it and I should have it or I shouldn't have it. And I think if people don't get clear on what their uh, basically money programming is, financial programming is from their family, that it, it gets really, really hard – to actually generate and create the money that most people would maybe like to have. Yeah, well, and I mean, when you were talking, there's a couple of things that really jumped out at me. You know, one is your family, your parents had a really strong point of view about the, like, what's the valuable, right, worthy ways of getting money. <laughs> yes. And, you know, and that the other ways are not. And, you know, for any given family, the valuable, worthy, this is the way to do it might look, you know, might be different, but there's probably still that, you know, that point of view that there is the the things that is okay to do and the things that aren't okay to do to get money. Absolutely. You know, so that and the, you know, I think you really illustrated it well that conflicting points of view because like I can remember um, being in graduate school for social work and my group therapy professor actually said you all deserve to be paid for helping people wow I don't think I heard that in graduate school for no. social work no and that's the thing because you know as a profession right social work has the point of view of you know we're here to help people we're here to improve the world you know whether you're working with individuals or organizations and that somehow it's not okay to get a living wage or more than that certainly um for doing that kind of work. And I, I run into that again and again where, you know, people are like, well, I do this wonderful healing modality, 
they feel like they should be giving it away because it's such a help to people. But it's like, we can't, and then you can't actually pay your rent if you're not willing to receive (laughs) money for doing this. You know, so it's like, on the one hand, there's that whole devaluing of money and the helping professions are all about the helping. On the other hand, most anyone I talk to would like to have enough money to be able to live their life and, you know, create the life they'd like to have. And that it's like a conflictual universe where I actually would like to create money, but I also have this point of view that it's not okay to ask for the money. Well, and I think some of that comes, what that prompted me, Pam, was remembering not just my parents' attitude towards money, but their attitude towards people who had money. Yes. And it tended to be disparaging. I remember... They had some good friends who were also in the same uh, university, and she came from a fairly wealthy family, but her uncle, who was childless or something, what I can't remember the story exactly, was really wealthy, and when he died, she became very wealthy. <laughs> My parents would say things like, well, you know, the Joneses are really wealthy, but they don't show it. Basically, they have- <laughs> so that's the, okay. <laughs> yeah. They have the class to not show it. And I'm like, really? I think I'd get a new car at least. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, and there can be so many. I mean, we were talking about like, you know, what's a worthy way of having getting money or not. And it's okay to have money if it doesn't show or not. I mean, one of the things that I finally realized was a really strong point of view that I grew up with Um Well, one thing was I felt like to be safe, I need to be like small and significant and unnoticed. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. And actually, when I was first introduced to Access, what I was doing was a network marketing business where to actually create a business and be successful in it, you have to be willing to be out in front of people and be a leader and that kind of thing. So I was actually searching for ways of working with these points of view when I got introduced to access consciousness and those tools. Um, But one of the things I was really aware of when I was a kid, the Patty Hearst trials were going on. And I remember watching about that, hearing about that, you know, she'd been kidnapped because she was really rich. And so I had grown up with this feeling of if you have too much money, you'll be a target. Oops. And so, you know, on the one hand, I'm creating a business, I'm interested in making money. And on the other hand, I had this fundamental point of view that if I was successful in creating that money, that I was going to be unsafe and a target. So I was constantly, you know, one person put it this way, which I thought was really awesome. It's like you're sitting at a restaurant and you say, okay, I'll have the roast beef. And the waiter starts to go away. You're like, wait, 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 no, wait, no. And now I'm going to have the, you know, the beef stroganoff. Right. <laughs> they start to go off. You say, wait, no, no, now I'm going to have. And, and you never actually get any food because you keep changing your mind and flip-flopping between different points of view. So. Yeah. I th- I mean, this is, money is one of the most highly charged topics in terms of all of the meanings that we heap upon it. If you think about it, I mean, money's just, it's almost nothing. I mean, it's kind of bizarre to say that, but it's, it's almost like the sum total of whatever meaning you give it in a way. Right. You know, and especially we, now there isn't even actual gold in the reserve. Right. That's it's just paper. The dollars. <laughs> I was getting out my New Zealand money to go to, cause I'm going to New Zealand and I was like, it's pretty paper, you know. <laughs> it would have no value except the meaning that people give it. Yeah, you know. Yeah. But we tend to both make it a measure of how much we're worth, or we're not worth, or not having it as a measure of how much we're worth and how noble we are. And that was that sort of, oh yes, it's very noble to not have money and to help the poor and to do all these things. So it's a pretty pretty nutty topic. It is. Well, one of the very first um, classes I facilitated as an access facilitator was, I mean, it was more targeted to business, but we ended up talking a lot about money and work and things like that. And, you know, so I asked people, I was like, what does money mean to you? And what does work mean to you? What does business mean to you? And people were coming up with stuff. And like one man, he was like, well, work is death. 
because wow. his father worked so hard and had a heart attack he basically worked himself to death wow and you know and things like you, you know my so many people have points of view that um you have to walk over people and abuse people and take yeah. advantage of people to really create wealth and money and you know it's like okay so if you have that point of view are you going to let yourself be successful in your business are you going to let yourself actually create money right right yeah and I think the another thing is if you don't get it that way you do it by something like being a sports star or a movie star and that creates this whole other weird kind of aura of us and them and oh you know I mean I've I've never understood the fascination with celebrities honestly Mm -hmm. but I my sense is when I was looking at this I don't know of a single celebrity really that's celebrated who isn't rich. I think it's, I mean, it's not just about people who do amazing things. It's about people who do amazing things and have a lot of money. Yeah. And somehow that creates this, I don't even know what it is, this kind of uh, uh, us and them and I want it, but I don't want it. And, you know, or I want it, but I'm not talented enough. I'll never do, you know, or that it'll magically happen. I know. I like you know, that one I'll too. be sitting at a restaurant and a director will come by and pick me to be the lead in the next film. That's right. a huge hit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'll be a star sensation overnight. <laughs> it'll be wonderful. And then I'll drive that red Maserati. Yeah. Uh, so, all right. So we are about to go to break and we will be back in just a minute or two talking more about money and what it means to different people and what it can mean to you. So join us. We'll be right back. Conscious lifestyle to your world. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Imagine receiving healing, vibration raising energy as you listen to the radio. Energy that flows effortlessly to you. Imagine exploring all things metaphysical, sharing in an ongoing adventure. Join me, Karen Smoot, along with my co hosts, Lisa Victorson and Wendy Weber, for Immersion into Source. Every Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on OM Radio. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. OM Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor, host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. What if business could be fun? What if business is the adventure of living? What are you choosing? Where do you do business that makes it easier, more fun, or more joyful for you? We'd love to see where you do business. Connect with us on Instagram at Joy of Business or Twitter at Joy of Business. And share your pictures with hashtags Business Done Where and joy of business. Let's change the world with business. Hello, I'm Miriam Knight of New Consciousness Review, inviting you to my new show where I interview the rising stars of the conscious awakening. We'll explore the many faces of consciousness and action and intriguing perspectives on life, the universe, and everything in between. Join us each Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern on the Rising Stars Show. Bringing you the best of the conscious minds in the world. Ohm Times Radio, your conscious lifestyle on steroids. So welcome back, everyone. I'm Marilyn Bradford of The Irreverent Therapist, joined by my partner, Pam Hodling, and we're talking about money. And a couple of things uh, came up on the first part of the show that I wanted to get to. One was just we were leaving it off with someone sitting in a coffee shop going, 
Oh, I just want to be discovered, and then it will all happen. Um, and what I was reminded of, and unfortunately, of course, I can't remember the whole song, but there was this really schmaltzy song when I was growing up, and it was all about and wishing and hoping and praying oh, and dreaming. Yeah, won't get him into your arms. And basically, what they were saying is, you got to do something. You got to talk to him. You got to go after him. <laughs> you mean you have to take some action? You have to take some action. And people don't get that that money's the same way. You actually have to do something. Even, you know, a scarlet woman of the night has to put a light out there. Let people know she's in business. So, um and I mean in an odd way, what I thought doing something was getting a job working for someone else, whether it was the government as a teacher or I needed some extra money in college and I worked at Hickory Farms in the mall. But when I thought about taking action, it was always about doing something for someone else. It never, ever in my wildest dreams occurred to me to create a business or be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one thing that really limits a lot of people is that they don't have the sense that they can go out, use their creative talents and abilities, and start something that's actually going to make money. Well, yeah, and you know, like I can remember, I used when I used to sit around wishing I had more money. It was like there was four, well, th- three particular ways to get that. Um, I could inherit money, right? I could win the lottery, <laughs> or my husband or I could get a raise. Like yeah, that well. was. You know, that was my universe of how to create money. And it was actually that network marketing business I did. It was like enough of a bridge between being a stay-at-home mom and then actually doing something that was a business that didn't feel like a big business. You know, it was just however much you want to do. And, you know, but it actually, over the years I did that, it was a tremendous education in, you know, kind of the nuts and bolts of doing business um, so that I came out of that with this awareness of there's all kinds of things I could do to create money. And in fact, um, you know, one of the questions that I love, which I learned from Simone Millicis is, you know, what other revenue streams can I create? Yes, that's and. Great. You know, and it's not, you're not defining it as, well, this is the way I can get more money. It's like, what's, what could I add to my life that would create more money? Yeah. Yeah. And there are so many possible ways to generate and create money. I mean, people make inventions. People start little, uh, I don't know, telecall things on the sides. They, you know, just all kinds of things. But one of the key questions there is asking, like you were asking the question, what other revenue streams can I add to my life? And I think a lot of this, and we talk about this a lot, is that particularly in terms of money, people have their solidified answers and their conclusions and their decisions made, and there's actually no room to ask any questions. Yeah. It's sort of, it's all sort of uh, taken care of, you know. Well, and even things like, I mean, we have all kinds of cliche statements like money doesn't grow on trees. <laughs> well, if you say that a few times, that is what, I mean, you're creating as, as your reality, as your relationship with money, that money doesn't come easily. Yeah. That you have to work for it. Um, you know, but what this makes me think of, Marilyn, it's like, like there is, there's so many different ways you can create money, but as long as you have the fixed points of view, whatever they are about money. And this is the way you can get money or this is why you can't have money or whatever. To me, there, nothing changes. Like you might try other things, but it, you know, none of it works until you change your relationship with money and the energy and the space you're willing to be with regards to money. Yeah. Because nothing can change as long as you have a fixed point of view in effect that, stops that whole thing of of having more money, receiving more money, which brings us to receiving. And that's a whole kind of different topic, but actually a same topic. Um, Gary Douglas, who's the founder of Access Consciousness and now his cohort, Dr. Dane here, uh, early on, Dane here is complaining that he didn't have any money. And Gary, he said, I, my issue is money. My, and Gary's like, no, it's not. He's like, oh, yes, it is. My issue is money. I can't get enough money. 
And Gary's like, no, it's not. And Dane is like, my issue's money. And Gary's like, no, it's not. And finally, Dane asked a question. How familiar is that? <laughs> it's like, uh, okay, so what is it? And then Gary said, your issue's receiving. And then he said, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a million dollars if you leave access now and go back to your old life. And Dane said, no way. And he said, see, it's not really about money. Well, he even said, how about 10? I'll give you 10 yes. million. Yeah. <laughs> you can go back to your old life. It was still no way. But you do have to be open to receiving. And I think a lot of people don't even know what that is. Um, and it's, it's a kind of an openness that says yes to whatever's coming to you. And I know that I cut that off for two reasons. One, I decided the world was not a safe place and I was sure going to have my barriers up and, you know, I wasn't going to let anybody get to me. But the difficulty is if you build your castle very carefully, no one can get in, but that includes all the good stuff too. Yeah. And the other one was whether it's from puritanical heritage or whatever it is, this whole idea that it is better to give than receive, that you shouldn't want anything for yourself, that you're selfish if you want things, that selfishness should be bred out of children. And you end up with a whole lot of people who anytime someone would actually like to give to them, put up their barriers and go, oh, no, 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 I couldn't possibly have that. Yeah. And if you actually have that attitude, you cannot receive money. Well, and just to relate the, the whole receiving thing back to what we were talking about before, it's like um, if I have – well, like you had talked about your parents' point of view of, you know, if money's coming from being a professor, that is good money. Because they're, they're paid poorly. Because they're paid poorly. And it's, it's, it's a worthy profession. And, you know, but if you were um, being, you know, running a big corporation, that I would think they would consider that not great money to, to be having. So if you, if you have those points of view about what makes a worthy endeavor to have to get money or not and or that you shouldn't have money or money's bad or you have to walk over people it's like all of those points of view get in the way of you actually receiving money because oh, yes. you know are you going to um say yes to some possibility that pops up if it doesn't fit what you've decided is okay with money no, you're going to limit yourself. It isn't yep. happening. Yeah, and then you're not going to have – well, I wouldn't take money from them, and I wouldn't take yeah. – and, you know, that's another interesting thing, who and what you'll take money from. There's a there's another story about a um, a fellow. He was a straight guy. He had a oh, shop. I love the story. I love the story. <laughs> he, had a, he had a shop, a clothing store in the gay area of San Francisco, okay? But he was he was basically terrified of gays. And he called our friend, it was Gary, and said, I don't understand why my, my store isn't making money. So Gary came in and he said, he said, okay, so how come your store isn't making money? And uh, the guy said, well, I don't know. And Gary said, okay, I'm going to pretend to be a customer. So Gary came in acting like a gay guy and the store owner just shut down. He says, look, you have a store in the gay section of San Francisco. You need to have these people flirt with you. He's like, what if they hit on me? What if they hit on me? He's like, so what if they hit on you? You don't have to say yes. Just allow them to flirt with you and have fun. And that's something we're so often not told with money. Have fun with your business. Have fun with your job. And he learned to have fun with all of these gay guys coming in and flirting with him. And his business and boomed. And it was that he was willing to receive the energy mm -hmm. that they were directing at him. Exactly. You and when he had his barriers up yeah. to that energy, he couldn't receive. And so if he couldn't receive the energy of them, he couldn't receive money from them. Yes. So if there's yeah. any group that you have a lot of prejudice against, you cannot receive money from anybody in that group, whether it's ethnic or racial or religious or gender or whatever it is. So it's very helpful. I mean, I know women who hate men and basically their businesses don't work out that well unless they're totally female oriented. Even then, if you cut off a whole section of people, it cuts off your life so yeah. much. Yeah. It just really cuts down your life. So you can look around and say, is there anyone I'm not willing to receive from? Why not? Yeah. Well, and you know what you were talking about, what it makes me think of is someone I was working with earlier today who had also this 
you know, when, when I finally have the money, then I will be able to do stuff. Then I'll and, have my life. Yeah. Yeah. I'll finally get my life going once I get my money handled. And it's that idea that money's the issue. And, you know, what I asked her was like, you know, is money the issue or is it something else? And we look at heavy and light, what feels heavy, what feels light. She was like, wow, something else feels lighter. And it's like everywhere you make money the issue of, uh, you know, until I get my money handled, I can't choose this. This isn't possible for me. Um, it's like it's like you're you're hanging yourself up in, in a loop that you can't ever get out of. If you're like, I'm going to change this no matter what, whether the money's there or it isn't, I'm changing this. You yes. start the change and you, then you can create the money. Absolutely. Because when you make money the issue, then you're making yourself the effect of what's outside of you. Yes. Where if you really go in and say, you know what? I'm starting a business. I don't have much money. I wonder what else I could do. How else could I get this business started? Oh, wait a minute. Here's a free chamber canvas thing on business. I think I'll go do that. It's getting into once again that I'll, I'll start my life. I'll create my life. You know, when I have money is a, is an excuse to not live, basically. And it's making, you know, money is the one thing that money and health are the two things that people basically can't argue. I can't do the class because I don't have the money. While other people are going, you know what? I'm going to that class. I don't care what it takes. Consciousness, universe, show me. I will, Can I have the money now, please? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And you can ask the universe for money. Can I have that money now, please, is a question I got from Access Consciousness. I use it all the time, and it's absolutely amazing what shows up. So we are about to go to another break, and we will be back with more on Can I Have the Money Now, Please? The cutting edge of conscious radio, Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Have you bought into the idea that you have to work hard for your money, that business is hard? I will share some dynamic access consciousness tools to get you out of your own way so you can create a business that actually succeeds. Join me, Simone Millicers, on the Joy of Business at 4 p.m. Mondays Eastern. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.ohmtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. If you remember living fearlessly, joyfully, and in a world filled with adventure, happiness, pleasure, and unbridled living, then this show is for you. Join me, Dame Nicole Brandon, as I bring you the world's top experts in wealth, creativity, Flow, seat edging technology, space, wellness, health, love, lust, and passion, all merging together each week here at the Hub of Happiness. Mondays at 6 p.m. Pacific Time and 9 p.m. Eastern Time on Passionate Living, where you can ride on the magic carpet ride of living and learn how to lead a passionately wild, exciting, and outrageously amazing life. Feed your soul with waves of consciousness on Ohm Times Radio. Hey, welcome back, everyone. Marilyn Bradford, Pam Hodling, the totally irreverent therapists, are talking today about money. And I was thinking about over the break, Pam, how every time I raised my rates, I would get this little bit of boop. 
can I really charge that much? Am I really worth it? Are people going to want to come and see me if I if I charge that much? And yet I had this sense of kind of disquietness, uh, not happy with what I was charging. Fortunately, I had access consciousness and all the tools. And one of the questions I learned to ask was, at what price or charging what rate would this be fun for me? Yeah. And that has really helped me out a lot. Um, and I do know that, I mean, I know therapists who work for, you know, like 40 or $50 an hour. And there's like, oh, all well, my clients are poor and nobody has any more money than that. And guess what? They're going to spend their entire life working for 40 or $50 an hour, which as a therapist, it's not exactly what it seems. <laughs> You have a lot of overhead expenses. You have a lot of overhead and a lot of time in between and depending on what you do, you know, so it's not, it's not like, uh, but I I was just uh, thinking about that and how many people undercharge for their services. Well, and that like the title of our talk, can I have the money now, please? Yes. Is actually a tool like you can say to yourself, can I have the money now, please? Can I have the money now, please? And, you know, just say it like 10 or 12 times. It's like you're, you're, you're practicing being that energy of asking, hey, you know, can you go ahead and play, pay me now? Thank yes. you. I yes. will receive this money. I will receive from you. Yeah, a lot of people are really afraid of asking for money, even when they've delivered an amazing service. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, what's popping up for me right now, Marilyn, is, you know, we've been talking a lot about how your points of view about money affect your ability and willingness to receive money, create money, be aware of different avenues for creating money. It's like, let's get into some of the nitty gritty of, okay, so I've got this point of view that if I, you know, if I'm too wealthy, I'll be a target. What do I do with that? How do I change it? I think that's a great question. How did you change it? I changed it using the Access Consciousness <laughs> Clary Statement. <laughs> yeah, so basically the tools that Marilyn and I use on the show come from Access Consciousness. And um, one of them is the Clearing Statement. And it's basically you ask a question and then you, you, you say this Clearing Statement. Energetically, you're going back to the point where you first created or took on that point of view um, and you're undoing that and undoing all the destruction that you've created, all the limitation you've created with it. And it sounds really simple, but it's actually incredibly effective. And so, you know, I might say to myself, okay, so, um, and I realize this isn't, I'm not asking this as a question, but I already kind of identified what was going on with me. So everywhere I decided that being wealthy or having money would make me a target, destroy and uncreate it all, right and wrong, good and bad, pod, pock, all nine, shorts, boys, and beyonds. So that end part was the clearing statement, and you can actually read all about it on a website called theclearingstatement.com. Yeah, I think that's a great example, Pam, because a lot of people feel so stuck with their belief systems and their points of view, and they don't realize that those belief systems and points of view actually create an energy, and what the clearing statement does is kind of like vacuum up all of that so that they can have a different choice. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is when you have a fixed point of view or belief system, it actually prevents you from being aware. Yeah. So... You know, if you had a lot of money, if you if you got rid of that point of view that if you're wealthy, you're going to be a target and all of a sudden you're really wealthy or over a period of time, you're really wealthy and you add awareness to your life, you'll know yeah. when to get out of the road or, you know, hire the bodyguard or this person is not so good or whatever it is. Yeah. Well, and and um, I also wanted to add about the clearing statement. So like another way you might use it, you know, because that was an example of a point of view I knew I had. Say I'm sitting there paying my bills or doing my taxes and going, starting to go, oh, oh no, oh, you know, how am I going to do this? You know, whatever, you know, tunnel I <laughs> dive down into with money. Um, you can say, okay, everything this is, everything that's coming up for me about yes. money right now, destroy and uncreate it. And you can give me that in times a godzillion. I like right that Right, wrong, good and bad, pod, pock, all nine, shorts, boys, and beyonds. You know, when I first got introduced to this tool, Marilyn, I was like, I was uh, at a meeting. This was like a committee meeting. And you know how you kind of go out on a limb to say something and everybody slams you? <laughs> <laughs> 
And then you're sitting there going, I'm never going to say anything I'm again. Pay my mouth um, for the rest of all eternity. Yeah, I used the clearing statement. I was like, okay, everything coming up for me, everywhere I feel like I don't want to ever say anything again, destroy and uncreate it, times a godzillion, right, wrong, good, bad, pod, pock, all nine shorts, boys, and mans. And within 30 seconds, I felt totally fine. That's amazing. And that's went a, away. Yeah. And we've talked about the clearing statement before, but I, I think it's so crucial to use when anything around money comes up because people are, myself included, are so insane about money. Yeah. And they limit themselves in so many ways. What if you could be an enormous gift to the world and also be a billionaire? Yeah. Why? So everywhere you've decided that those two are incompatible, would you be willing to destroy and uncreate at all times a godzillion? Yes. Right, right and wrong, wrong, good and bad, pod, pock, all night, shorts, boys, and beyond. Which made me think of something else. And I think we touched on this, but not completely. And that is so many churches, cults, religions, metaphysical practices, spiritual practices have this idea that money is wrong and bad. Yeah. And that as a spirit and a soul, you really don't need money. It's just this despicable body we have until we drop the body and become enlightened or whatever. I mean, what a bunch of hooey. <laughs> You're on the earth. There are wonderful things on this earth, just walking in the sand or eating a fabulous meal. Or, you know, if you could actually celebrate being here and celebrate your body, and yes, it actually is your body that requires the money, why not have the best while you're here? And enjoy it. And, and enjoy have fun it. with it. <laughs> yeah, and everywhere you've decided that spirituality or consciousness, it's not even consciousness, I don't even know what people have, enlightenment or God or whatever, has, has cannot, um, if you're, how oh, big? Yeah. Well, you it's, can't have it's, both. You can't, you can't have, have both. Thank you, Pam. Or you spirituality just, or anything. Yeah. You just simplified it for me. <laughs> <laughs> So everything that is and everything that doesn't allow you to have it all, would you and everything that makes the things that money have, like being able to go to the beach and swim or horseback ride or fly somewhere, everything that makes that bad and wrong or less than, would you be willing to destroy and uncreate at times a godzillion? Yes. Right Thanks. and wrong, good and bad, pod, pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. And I just want to point it out because, you, you know, you, you correct it. You, you were starting to say enlightenment and consciousness and you said, well, not consciousness. I just wanted to point out that's because consciousness includes everything and judges nothing. Yes, very so different. So the space of consciousness doesn't have a point of view about money. Or about your body is is evil or that, you know, to be enlightened, you can't have money or any of that. It's like that can't exist in the space of consciousness because all of that is judgments. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And judgments are, and we've said it before, always destructive, always yeah. arbitrary. They actually have no truth to them. Mm -hmm. And um, I just, before we go to break, I just wanted to add in. So we've been talking about using the clearing statement on your points of view. You know, I also want to bring up a lot of your points of view about money aren't yours. Oh, good um, point. Let's you know, go into that a bit. <laughs> it's like, you know, Marilyn talked about taking on her parents' points of view. So there's another tool you can use, which is called, who does this belong to? And, you know, say you're aware of like, okay, I seem to have this really strong point of view that is not okay for me to have money. Well, who does that belong to? And you're not asking that to find out who. You're asking to look at the energy of it. Do you feel lighter when you ask that or heavier? And I like to add then that who does it belong to? Is it mine or someone else's? Because yeah. I can – and you're you're looking for what's light. And um, because what happens is if you're taking on someone else's point of view, it's like you could go to therapy for 20 years and you won't change that point of view because it's not yours. You're just aware yeah. that people around you have this point of view and you can – so when you ask, who's this belong to, and it's not yours, you can just return it to sender. And I yeah. like to return it to sender a thousandfold with consciousness <laughs> yes, attached. Exactly. A billion times a billion times a billion times a godzillion. <laughs> yeah. Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. That is really crucial because not only can you pick it up from your parents and being trained to it, um, or from your religion or whatever, but you can just pick it up in the ether sort of. You have a whole yeah. lot of people who are doing poverty consciousness 
And you can pick it up just walking down the street. Oh, my gosh. I mean, I remember once going to the mall for Christmas, and I had plenty of money. I mean, I have a tiny family, so it was no big deal, you know. But I walked out of the mall going, oh, my gosh, how am I ever going to pay for all that stuff? You know, I charged all this on my charge card. I charged maybe $200 worth. And I went, wait a minute. That is not mine. I have plenty of money to pay off the charge cards. Well, that's, I used, you know, years ago when there was a big, you know, stock market change here in the U.S. and, you know, financial crisis and all that stuff, I did a lot of who does this belong to? Because, like, I had friends whose financial situation had not changed at all and who were totally freaking out about money, Mm -hmm. right? And it's like, who does this belong to? You know, how many people in the country are going to this place of freak out about money? And if I'm willing to ask who does this belong to and recognize it's not mine, this actually doesn't even apply to my financial situation, you know, then you're not like picking up on that mass vibe of, right. of total despair. freak out. <laughs> despair and all of that. Uh, yeah. Happened- it, oh, I just wanted to add to that because what happens is like, say there's that energy of anxiety around money, you will match that to what's actually going on in your life. So you'll find yourself worrying about your bank statement or these bills or blah, 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 blah. And you think it's your worry because it's your money and right. your situation that's coming up to you. But when you ask that, who's this belong to you? And you can see energetically, it's not yours. It's like all that goes away. And you're like, oh, I, you know, like you said, I actually have plenty of money to pay the $200 I just right. put on my charge card. <laughs> um, you know, once I change that energy. Yeah, absolutely. So changing the energy, recognizing, acknowledging that this isn't yours and that you don't have to run with a poverty mentality pack. That's huge. And we'll be back in just a couple of minutes with more on Can I Have the Money Now, Please? The future of Internet Radio is here. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Dr. Kevin here, and I want to invite you every Thursday, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, to join me on The Dr. Kevin Show, where we have a diversity of guests who help you step outside the box, behind the curtain, and see what a load of crap is going on in the world today, so you have more information with which to make better decisions. We'll see you there. Namaste. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. As difficult as it is to believe, There are places in Africa where human traffickers sell albino children and their body parts for use in magic rituals. Humanity Healing International is actively working in Uganda to change this paradigm. The Albino Rescue Project finds albino children who are at risk and places them in safe schools and environments where they can learn and grow free from fear. To learn more or to sponsor a child, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Do you want to be a better communicator? Do you want to better connect with the important people in your life? Do you want to enrich your relationships? If so, join me, Matthew Cooper, on the Positive Control System Show every Wednesday evening at 11 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Ohm Times Radio. I'll meet you there. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Welcome back, everyone, to The Irreverent Therapist, where we're talking about, can I have the money now, please? And we've been looking at all sorts of ways our points of view affect our money flows and whether or not we're willing to receive and ask for money and parental points of view and picking up other people's points of view. And when we were talking about that, I got to thinking about something that uh, Simone Millicis 
uh, story that she told. And she has a wonderful show on Om Times Radio called uh, The Joy of Business. So check that out. She's amazing. But she was talking about how when she first began to have a lot of money, she was sitting in first class on a flight where a lot of people who are in access consciousness were flying down to Costa Rica for a seven day. And she said when the first people came in, she sort of started to shrink and like make herself smaller. It's like she didn't want them to feel bad. And then she went, wait a minute. What if I'm an inspiration to them that they too can have this? And she sat up straight and had her little ginger ale or whatever it was and was waving. Hi, everybody. Hi. Yeah, you too can have this. And I just thought that was so great because what we tend to do around money is to go down as if we're going to upset people. But where does that leave them for inspiration and ideas? It's like, oh, we're all down in the basement. How fun is that? Mm-hmm. What if you have a really positive attitude about, you know what? I created and generated money and you can too. How does it get any better than this? Well, you know, I'm so glad you brought up that story because that that actually occurred with me a, a few weeks ago because I was shopping with a friend and um, it was clear that it was very easy for me to spend a lot of money in this store. <laughs> and she was hesitating to spend a little bit of money in this store and I started to go to well I'll just come back tomorrow and buy all this stuff oh, so you don't right you don't embarrass <laughs> so her. that I would so you yeah. know because I was like eh. and I was like wait a second that that was me doing exactly what you described Simone doing and and I and I you know I was like what actually is is true for me here? Well, what's true for me is I can just buy this stuff. And if I'm willing to be that energy, what will that create? And yeah. so then I went ahead and, and bought what I was going to buy. Um, well, and I actually love being around my rich friends because it's like, oh, I can. OK, I'll have some of that. I'll be that energy. And it's not, I mean, there's a big difference between having a friend who's wealthy, who's just being themselves and just has created and generated a lot, um, and someone who uses it against people. But people can use wealth against people, and people can use poverty against people. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's really kind of the same energy. Um, I'm less than, I'm greater than, all of that, rather than, yeah, I created all of this, and you can too, and let's go have fun, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I'm so glad we're talking about all of this because to me, this gets to uh, the energy you be with money, the space you be with money. You could call it your relationship with money. Um, one of the things that Marilyn and I both do is we destroy and uncreate our relationship with money, our relationship with business, with our business, you know, with everything we're creating. Yes. Um, because what happens is that relationship is like, it's like all the baggage you're bringing forward, all the expectations, all the things you've tried that worked or didn't work. And it's like, you're carrying all that with you to this moment and, and it's all limiting and affecting what you're able to choose now. And when you destroy and uncreate your relationship with money, it's like you're saying, Hey, let's just undo all of this. Who am I today? What questions can I ask and what's possible? with me and money and that totally changes everything yes yes and you know i'm glad you brought that up pam because i think we could mention a few other things that are very helpful if you'd like to change your relationship with money um these are access tools that i've used and i know you've used and they've made a tremendous difference Mm -hmm. one of them is called tithing to you And basically, you take 10% of everything that comes in and you put it in a separate account and you never spend it. And what it shows you is that you can – two things, is that you can actually have money Mm -hmm. and that you're worth it. And you're telling the universe – actually, three things because you're telling the universe that you would like to have more money. And it was interesting because I had a really difficult time with this for a long time. And finally, I asked – some questions. I thought I'd ask that before, but you know, I apparently I hadn't. I said, what does tithing to me do? I mean, what does that mean to me? And what I got is from my parents, you're being irresponsible because you're doing that first before you pay your bills or anything else. I was like, well, thank heavens for the clearing statement. Everything that is, <laughs> I destroy and agree that 
times a godzillion right, wrong, good, head, back, right, wrong, <laughs> choice, boys, and beyonds. And I have not had any difficulty tithing to me, honoring me. It's an honoring of you. It's an acknowledgement that you deserve to have money. And I think it's really super duper. Well, and I'd like to, you know, just to add to what you said, because what happens is, it, and for everyone, it's a different amount of money, but there's some amount of money that when you have that in your 10% account, you will feel like you have money. Yes. And suddenly money becomes not an issue. Like, you know, the way, the way, as I used all these access tools with money, the first thing that started changing was like, I started not having an emotional reaction to money. You know, my husband and I, we used to like do the taxes and we'd all be stressed out, snapping at each other. <laughs> Everything like that. And like, ah, stress. So you know, all the and, Rottweilers and, come out. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like what I noticed. I was like, wow, we're able to engage with each other over money from a space of well, what, what could we try now? What could we try this different? Cool. And we would yeah. like create a budget, not from now this is our budget. We have to stick with it, but let's try this, see what happens, see what this creates. So there was more ease with money. And then, you know, then I actually started having more and more money in the bank. It's like I, we were creating more money. And, you know, like a telltale time for me, Marilyn, was when we took our kids to the orthodontist and they both needed braces at the same time and you know he's like okay so it, it, you can pay it over about five years but this is gonna be ten thousand dollars i was like i can totally create that cool. like you know i was like i knew that within a couple of months i could create that money if i needed to and yeah. i didn't need to in that couple of months but it was instead of anything coming like an unexpected bill or a you know someone wrecks the car and now you need to buy a new car. It's, it's, there's not that uh, about money. It's right. just like, okay, so what do I, what would have to change? What would I have to create to do some, to, to do this? Um, and uh, so, so that changing your relationship with money by using these tools starts to allow you to create something very different. Absolutely. Absolutely. And another tool that has helped me is to carry the amount of money you think a rich person or a wealthy person would carry in their wallet at, the, at all times. And you can start out using your 10% is what you carry in your wallet. But I know I'm up to, I think I've got sixteen or $1,700 with me. Mm -hmm. um, I know some people just carry gold coins, but it gives you this sense of wealth as you go around. Um, and it's, it's really about, as all of these things are, changing the energy. There's an energy to poverty consciousness, to scarcity. <gasps> there's never enough. And there's an energy of peace and ease to having money, knowing you can generate and create it. And you can start today. You get $5, put 50 cents away in that 10% account and begin mm -hmm. building up so that you you have this sense of yeah I can do this well and and just to add to that it's like a lot of times we have we tend to have an amount of money that we're comfortable having Oh, yes. Whether it's what we're carrying with us or what's in the bank. So, like, say my comfortable level is 10000 in the bank. What will happen is if I start going above that, I'll spend it. And if I start going below it, I get anxious about money. And so I, I just kind of keep it. And, and, and we do this unconsciously, right? Yeah, So absolutely. what you want to do, too, is just try and create, you know, whatever amount of money you've decided you're comfortable with. And, you know, especially if you start to notice like, oh, wow, every time I, you know, get up more money coming in, I just spend it right away. You can use the clearing statement to to destroy and uncreate those points of view that keep you having the same amount of money and never going more or less than that. Oh, yeah. I think in fact, that was reading on me right now. I just realized I'm doing a little variation of that. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, yeah, and one other thing is I, I'd like to talk just a little bit about the difference between wealth and rich, mm -hmm. even though we've been using riches because that's how a lot of people think if I want to be rich. But riches is confined to money. People who have true 
wealth, have wealth in every area of their life so that they do have lots of money. So much better, they probably don't even think about it. But they also have a wealth of friends and a wealth of affection and a wealth of beauty in their lives. Whereas people who go for just being rich, you can almost feel that contractive energy, tend to have money, but there's this contractedness and this kind of eh to every other area of their life. They have more tumultuous relationships, you know, the divorces that require the multi-million dollar lawyers, the, you know, the trauma, drama, upset and intrigue and all that kind of stuff. So it's also about how do I create wealth in my life in every area of my life? Yeah. You know. Yeah. And I'm so glad you brought that up because it was when I heard that distinction that I realized all my points of view about it's better to not have money had to do with riches. Wow. Not with wealth. Yeah. So it was like, would, would I like to be wealthy? Yes. Would I like to be rich? No. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and you can begin being wealthy right away. It's about cultivating this sense of plenty and abundance in your life as opposed to um, scarcity and poverty or just distance. Anyway, we are out of time. And I'm so glad you joined us. And we will talk with you next week on The Irreverent Therapist. And I would say, Marilyn, we could do a whole other show on money. I know. Let's just keep going. (laughs) Tons of stuff we didn't even get to. So it's it's all good. It really is. And uh, all right. We will talk with you next week. Bye, everybody.